You know I'm crazy about you, Alvin. Mm. When you kiss me that way, I could just die, Alvin. Oh, Alvin. Oh, no, Alvin. Alvin. Wait a minute. You are Alvin, aren't you, Alvin? <laughs> Theater 5 presents My Other Self. I've got to keep myself calm. I've got to face it. I've got to think it all through. Now, maybe the best way is to think of everything that's happened. Uh, start with last night when I returned from my vacation in New Jersey. Last night. Oh, it seems like a year ago. I got home about 8. I'd been away for three weeks, three weeks vacation, and I got home about eight, carrying my suitcase. I got into the elevator, and there was Maxie, the elevator man. Evening, Mr. Jones. Ah, uh, good evening, Maxie. Uh, how have you been? Well, I ain't changed none since this morning. What? Oh, well, of course, I, uh, I didn't see you this morning. Well, maybe you was hung over. What? <laughs> what do you mean? What do I mean? <laughs> now, Maxie, I don't appreciate that kind of joke. I think you know my views on drinking. Oh. <laughs> I asked you civilly a moment ago how things had been with you for the past three weeks. Oh, not as good as they've been with you. <laughs> that was the first strange thing. I didn't know what Maxie was laughing at. Oh, he irritated me, of course, but Maxie had always been a most slipshod and disrespectful employee. I hadn't been in the apartment ten minutes, uh, nine to be exact, when the phone rang. Yes? This is Alvin? This is Alvin Jones, yes. You sound different. Who is this? Oh, for crying out loud, Alvin, this is Rosie. I don't know any Rosie. <laughs> oh, that's a hot one. What number are you calling? <laughs> Now, look, this is Lyceum 54598. What number are you calling? Oh, Alvin, you kill me. <laughs> my name is Alvin, madam, but my last name is Jones. Oh, no kidding. Uh, come on, cut the kitten, Alvin, honey. Uh, look, I got good news. I don't have a date tonight after all. What are you talking about? I'm talking about I should come over there. That's what I'm talking about. I broke the date just for you, honey. You have the wrong number. Oh, come on. Alvin, cut out the kid. If you do not ring off immediately, I shall call both the police and the telephone company. Oh, I get it. You got another girl there with you. Now, see. Ah, you... don't worry, honey. I'm broad-minded. Almost as broad-minded as you. Get it? I'll just do my hair and nails tonight. But uh, tomorrow night, Stella, right? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you're a kind you are. See you tomorrow night, honey. So long. It was most annoying, and somewhat puzzling, too. But I never permit anything to get in the way of my established routine. I went to bed at 10 o'clock precisely. And at exactly 2.47, I was awakened by the telephone. Hmm. Hmm. Yes? Hey, Alvin, baby. Who is this? It's me, Alvin. Hey, where you been tonight? The joint's still open. Come on down, we need some laughs. I'm afraid I don't know who you are, and at any rate, it's 2.47 in the morning. Well, you said you dropped in a night album, baby. Oh, you have the wrong number. I was quite angry. I could not get back to sleep. And as I lay there in bed, I remembered suddenly that when I had come into the apartment earlier, I had forgotten to wind my eight-day clock. So I got up and went into the living room to do so. I had been away for three weeks, and my eight-day clock was running. It was terribly frightening. Inside, I was shaking, and there was nothing I could do about it. I drank a glass of milk to try to calm myself. Then I dropped the glass. I had been away for three weeks. How did it happen that there was fresh milk in the refrigerator? Toward dawn, I dozed off. But the last thing I remember, I was trembling. In the morning, when the elevator came up for me, Maxie was back on duty again. Morning, Mr. Jones. Uh, good morning, Maxie. Um, Maxie. Yes? Did you or anyone else in the building let anyone into my apartment in the last 21 days? What? 
21 days? You mean three weeks? Hmm. Hey, no, Mr. Jones. Well, when I came home last night, my clock was ticking. Well, why not, Mr. Jones? That's what clocks do. They tick. Well, who set it? Didn't you? Maxie, it's an eight-day clock. I want to know if anyone's been in my apartment in the last three weeks. Nobody but you, as far as I know. Me? Sure. Oh, oh, and that girl, too. What girl? Well, here we are, main floor. Uh, what girl, Maxie? <laughs> oh, you're some kidder, Mr. Jones. Now, did I understand you to say that there was a girl in my apartment? Now, look, I, I know you told me no mention to anyone else, but what's the harm in mentioning her to you? We both know about it. Maxie! Now you sounded the way you used to be. Well, what do you mean by the way I used to be? Oh, well, you know, the way you always was uh, before lately. You know, stiff, nasty kind of. Hmm. Boy, I never seen such a change as since you got that girl. Some dish she is, too, huh? Well, there was clearly only one thing to do, and I did it. Instead of going directly to my office, though it troubled me that I would be 15 minutes late, I made directly for the police station in my precinct. I was led into Lieutenant Hart's office. I explained the incredible situation, but apparently not very well. I'm not certain I get this, Mr. Jones. An eight-day clock was ticking? Yes, yes, sir, and I had been away for three weeks. And people kept calling you. Yeah, that's right, Lieutenant. A young woman, well, she sounded young, named, uh... Rose, and a man who seemed to have been drinking. Well, lots of people get the wrong number. No, no, these people were calling my number. They knew my name. They acted as though I should know who they were. All right, what do you want me to do? Well, obviously, Lieutenant, somebody has been using my apartment during the three weeks that I've been away, and I want the police to try to find out who it is. But you say the elevator man thought you'd been living there for those three weeks? Yes, yes, that's correct. I, I can't explain that. Sure you haven't been living there? I was on vacation at Lake Millville in New Jersey. You can prove that. Well, now, really, Lieutenant, why should I have to? Uh, something else. Who knows you in the neighborhood? Oh, well, uh, several of the tenants in the building. Then there are the uh, stores, you know, the people in the stores in my block. Uh, uh, the florist, for example. We often pass the time of day. And uh, the people in the supermarket. How about the liquor store? There's a liquor store, isn't there? I'm not a customer of the liquor store. I do not drink. But the proprietor, uh, Mr. James, sometimes he takes the air out front, and I've had several pleasant conversations with him. He knows me. You always talk like that? I beg your pardon? Never mind, Mr. Jones. I'll look into this. Don't worry. I won't brush it off. It interests me, and I'll be in touch. I felt vaguely that Lieutenant Hart seemed to be investigating me instead of the interloper who had made use of my apartment. But at least he had promised an investigation. When I returned home, Maxie took me up in the elevator. Is your mail, Mr. Jones? I didn't have time to bring it up. Oh, thank you, Maxie. Uh, Maxie. Hmm? During the last three weeks, did I ever ask you to borrow your pass key? Yeah, sure. Well, you remember, about uh, three weeks ago, you locked yourself out. Came in here at four or five in the afternoon, you did. I gave you my pass key. Mm-hmm. I did give it back to you, didn't I? Oh, sure. Next morning, because uh, when I gave it to you, I was going off duty. Thank you, Maxie. Thank you very much. It was a little clearer now. Somebody had got hold of that key, had one made for himself, and, well, of course, whoever it was had kept his head averted whenever he rode in the elevator with Maxie. When I got into my apartment, I thought it all through. And while not everything was explained by this business of the key, I felt that I should let Lieutenant Hart know right away. But before I could call, the doorbell sounded. Hi, Alvin, honey. I don't believe I... Are you Rosie? I ain't Elizabeth Taylor. Well, come on, Alvin. Aren't you going to let me in and give me a drink? You... You recognize me? Well, just because you got a haircut, you think you're a different man from all the other times I've been here? Oh, how's that little drinky, Alvin? You recognize me? Good heavens. I stood aside and let the girl in. <coughs> Rosie... And she recognized me. I couldn't understand it. 
She made herself right at home. She knew my apartment as well as I did. She even knew something about it that I didn't know. That in one of the kitchen cabinets, there was some liquor. <laughs> she made some drinks. I wouldn't have known how. And she even told me where to sit down. Right here beside me on the couch, Alvin. Well, uh, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> You're just great at this stiff formal act. <laughs> here, here's your drink. Oh, thank you. I'm uh, quite unaccustomed to this sort of thing. <laughs> oh, you kill me. <laughs> Skull. Huh? Uh, oh, uh, a skull? Mm. Uh, we, uh, we clink glasses, is that it? <laughs> <laughs> a girl never knows what to expect from you. Now, now this form of it's a new one. I like it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <sighs> oh, my goodness, this is rather a delightful concoction. Oh, this is rather a delightful concoction. <laughs> Okay, Alvin, I'll let you have one more gulp of it. Oh, thank you. Mmm. My. Now, put it down. Very well. Now, Alvin, honey. Alvin. Well, what is it? I'm at a loss to know what it is you expect of me. You want me to tell you? I'm afraid you'll have to. <laughs> Okay, I'll play along. It's uh, kind of fun. Uh, just to put your arms around me, you big lug. Oh. Oh, Alvin. Oh, Rosie. You know, I'm crazy about you, honey. Uh, perhaps I ought to tell you. Tell me what. Oh, nothing. Uh, Are you really, Rosie? Really what? Uh, crazy about me? Why, well, I, I shouldn't say it, but... Oh, I am. Oh, I sure am. You're the top, Sonny, darling. Oh, Rosie. Oh, oh darling. <clears throat> Excuse me, won't you? Oh, hello, Mr. Jones. Oh, Lieutenant Hart. Uh, uh, come in, won't you? Uh, Miss uh, uh, Rosie, this is Lieutenant Hart. Oh, Hart, I'm getting out of here. Oh, Rosie, no, please. It might be just as well. I have no reason to hold this young lady... And I do want to talk to you alone. Well, I'm on my way. Uh, uh, Rosie, wait. Uh, where will I see you? Well, the usual place. The usual place, but where is... Uh... Relax, Mr. Jones. You'll find her. Uh, hmm. She looks findable to me. Well, oh, all right. Uh, sit down, Lieutenant. Thank you. Did you get any mail today? Hmm? Oh, yes, yes. As a matter of fact, I did. I took it from Maxie in the elevator, and I never looked at it. Why don't you look at it now? Well, all right. Uh, here it is. Well, now, uh... Hmm. What's this? A bill from the florist downstairs, right? Yes, and good heavens, it's for... Uh... It's for one dozen roses each night for the last three weeks. Well, yes, Bob. But what does this mean? I imagine it means you gave the girl roses every night just because her name is Rose. Well, I didn't, Lieutenant. I never met her before tonight. Uh, you've got another bill there, haven't you? Oh, yes, yes. Why, this one from the liquor store. Why, that's incredible. I never bought any liquor in my life. That's what the liquor store guy told me just now. He never bought any liquor before the last three weeks. And the florist told me about the roses. And they both know you. You told me that yourself. They say it was you that came into their places and talked to them. And bought the stuff. I don't know what to say. I knew you had those bills because the two storekeepers told me they sent them to you. Now, what they're saying, Mr. Jones, is that you were here during the last three weeks. Not in Lake Millville, New Jersey. I just don't understand, Lieutenant. I was at Lake Millville. Uh, Mr. Jones, do you feel all right? Certainly I do. Do you ever get headaches? Well, I, uh... Yes, yes, once in a while. Did you get any headaches in Lake Millville? No, I don't think I got... Well, yes, yes, in a way. When I stayed out in the sun, sunbathing, I... Yes, yes, I, I got headaches out in the sun once in a while. But I don't see... Did you ever hear of schizophrenia? That's a split personality, isn't it? Mm-hmm, split personality. A man gets a headache, closes his eyes, maybe dozes off in the sun at Lake Millville. Presto. He opens his eyes, gets up, and he's not prissy and formal any longer. No, he's a loud, funny, lively, swinging guy. He isn't afraid of girls any longer. He's a good time Charlie. And when he goes back to being Mr. Stiff and formal, he can't remember anything about it. Oh, that can't be true. What time do you go to bed at the lake? Uh, ten o'clock. I always go to bed at ten o'clock. I bet you do at that. You go to sleep at 10 o'clock, I think you do, and you've only got a 40-mile drive. 
It's hours before you have to wake up back in Millville. You paint the town, get back there, and wake up as old Mr. Stiff and Formal again. Schizophrenia? Schizophrenia. Split personality. Think it over, Mr. Jones. When he was gone, I stood for a long time just staring at the door. And then I remembered Rosie and how it had felt sipping that drink and then putting my arms around her. <laughs> and then I remembered what Lieutenant Hart had said about split personality. And all of a sudden, I was out the door. And when the elevator came... Hi, Mr. Jones. Maxie, you know Rosie, don't you? Oh, well, sure. You introduced me, don't you remember? About three weeks ago or so. All right. If Rosie says she'll meet me in the usual place, where do you suppose that would be? Well, that's the name of the bar three blocks down, Mr. Jones. The usual place. <laughs> I ran down the street, stumbling a little, and I came to that bar, and I went in, and I found Rosie in a booth toward the back. Well. Oh, Rosie. You've been running. Uh, move over, Rosie. Let me sit down next to you. Hey, what's the matter? Uh, just the way we sat next to each other on my couch. I must say, you're a hard guy to figure. Oh, Rosie, you're beautiful. Uh, sure I am. I don't know how to tell you what you mean to me. <laughs> Uh, now he's got a square act. I tell you. Oh, I, I love you, Rosie. And you have to love me just the way you behaved toward me back in my apartment. I, I've never had much experience with girls, but... Uh, oh, oh, oh. Uh, now, please, Rosie. You're a case, you are. It's so hard to keep up with you. God. Well, you don't understand, Rosie. You see, I've got these two personalities. And I don't blame you not to like one of them. But uh, you did uh, like the other one, didn't you? Oh, brother. Well, I'll do my best to get back into the other person. And we'll have a lot of fun. <laughs> we'll have uh, 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 a ball. Yeah, is that what they call it? Uh -huh. <laughs> a ball. We'll have a ball, Rosie. <laughs> See, I never knew I had this other personality. But now that yeah. I do know, oh, oh, boy, I'm going to have some fun out of life. Uh, Mr. Jones, excuse me. Oh, uh, uh, Lieutenant Hart. Mr. Jones, I apologize to you. Huh? For all that split personality stuff I was talking about. We got the guy... What? Fact, an absolute double for you, he is. Never saw anything like it. He saw you on the street one day, and he's been following you around, taking notes ever since. He planned to have a ball and run up a big bill in your name. Hey, you mean this isn't the guy I've been dating the past three weeks? Nah, that guy's being held at the station. Well, it, it, it doesn't have to matter, Rose. It doesn't, huh? I thought you was acting funny tonight. And no wonder. You're not you. You're an imposter. Well, so long, Buster. <laughs> I called for her to come back, but she just kept on going. Out of that bar and out of my life. I refused Lieutenant Hart's offer to take me to the station so I could see the man who'd been impersonating me. No, I, I just came home. You see, I'm trying to think my way out of this. I thought for a while tonight that I had a chance. I thought I had a split personality. But I haven't. I'm me... I'm Alvin Jones, precise, exact, fussy, meticulous, scared. And I haven't got a girl. And I'll never have a girl. Oh, I wish I were that man in the jail who looks just like me. Theater 5 has presented My Other Self, written by Robert Senadella and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, William Redfield, Adrian Bayen, Walter Kinsella, and Sam Raskin. Audio engineer, Marty Folia. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Original music by Alexander Vlasdatsenko. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite your comments right to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking.